For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. Good Saturday morning. Paul says here in Romans chapter 7 that as a Christian, redeemed by the grace of God, there's now something within him that wants to do good and agrees with God's law and knows God's law is right. There's something within that says, what the law tells me to do is right and I do want to do it. But there's also something else in me that rises up and says, nah, do the bad thing. Even though I determine not to do what is bad, I suddenly find myself in circumstances that determination melts away and I end up doing what I swore I would never do. So what's gone wrong? Paul's explanation is, it's no longer I who do it. It's sin living in me. Isn't that strange? There's a division within our humanity. There's the I that wants to do what God wants, but there's also the sin which dwells in me. Human beings, we are complicated creatures. Within us, we have spirit, soul, and body, each distinct from one another. Paul is suggesting here that the redeemed spirit never wants to do what God has prohibited. It agrees with the law that it is good. And yet there's an alien power, a force Paul calls sin, a beast that's lying still within us until touched by the commandment of the law. Then it springs to life and we do what we didn't want to do. This is what we all struggle with. Tomorrow we'll read later in this chapter, what a wretched man I am. Who's going to rescue me from this body of death? Here is where we arrive at where the Lord Jesus began the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You're blessed when you come to the end of yourself, when you understand your own spiritual bankruptcy. This is the point where God's help is given. This is what we need to learn. If we think that we have something in ourselves that we can work out our own problems with, or if we think that our will is strong enough that we can control evil in our lives simply by determining to do so, then we've not come to the end of ourselves yet. The Spirit of God simply folds his arms and waits and let us go ahead and try to take care of ourselves. And we fail, and we fail miserably, until at last, out of our failures, we cry, Oh, wretched man that I am. Sin has deceived us, and the law, as our friend, has come in and exposed sin for what it is. When we see how wretched it makes us, then we're ready for the answer, which we'll read tomorrow in verse 25. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who will deliver me from this body of death? The Lord Jesus has already done it. We are to respond to our feelings of wretchedness and failure by reminding ourselves immediately of the fact that is true in Christ Jesus. We are no longer bound to our sinful flesh by the law. We're married to Christ, Christ who is risen from the dead. We must no longer think I'm poor and struggling and a bewildered disciple left alone to wrestle against these horrible urges. We must now think I am a free child of God. I'm dead to sin, dead to the law, because I'm married to Christ. His power is mine, right here, right now. Heavenly Father, thank you that I have been united with Christ by faith and that because of union with him, I am dead to sin. Thank you that in Christ I am dead to the law and alive in Jesus. I've been released from the law, having died to that which I was bound to so that by your grace I've been credited with your righteousness. Lord, I desire to serve you in the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you that I'm not under law, but I'm under grace. Thank you that the penalty for my sin has been paid and the power of sin in my life has been broken all through grace by faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Help me keep my sinful nature nailed to the cross because, Lord, in me there's no good thing. I rejoice that you, you have started a good thing in me and you will complete it on the day of Jesus Christ. May my life and my witness be honoring to you, I pray in your holy name. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow.